Top 10 Strangest Slash Rarest Tanks of World War One. Today, Papa J-Man Time is going to tell you about some strange slash rarest tanks of the Essen Weltkrieg or World War One, as you would say it in German. So yeah, let's go into it. Number 10, the Bremer Marine Wagon 1, a tank I'm pretty sure most of you have never heard of. The Bremer Marine Wagon 1 was a prototype landship from 1915. Keep in mind, landship was the term used for tank and tank prototypes in the year before 1916. 1916 was the year in which the Mark 1 was introduced, the Mark 1 being the first tank to be used in combat. The Marine Wagon 1 was armed with one 7.92mm Maxim Spandu MG08 machine gun. Its armor thickness was estimated to be between 6 and 8 millimeters, and its speed was between 4 and 8 miles per hour. This is one of Germany's first landship prototypes, but definitely not the first. The Bremer Marine Wagon was one of those rare tanks that, or is one of those rare tanks that most of German tank enthusiasts have never heard of, let alone have ever researched. Number 9, the Landpanzer Cruiser Project of 1915 through 1917. The Landpanzer Cruiser was a series of two German prototype tanks from 1915 through 1917. These tanks were both flat heavy tanks. These tanks were very similar to ironclads used during the American Civil War. The first tank, the Landpanzer Cruiser 1, was designed in 1915 and was based on another prototype vehicle called the Panzer Cruiser from 1913. The Landpanzer Cruiser 1's main armament was never installed as the tank was never finished. Its armor thickness was between 6 and 8 millimeters. The speed of this tank was about 8 miles per hour. The Land Panzer Cruiser had only one prototype built, the one you see in the photograph. In 1917, Frederick Gobel, the designer of the Land Panzer Cruiser, designed the Land Panzer Cruiser II. This was meant to be a super heavy tank. The vehicle had an armor thickness of 101.6 millimeters, but the tank's hull was never completed. The photograph you see is of the tank's track system. The speed of the Land Panzer Cruiser II was 7.4 miles per hour. The Land Panzer Cruiser I was probably the better of the examples as this project was almost finished. The only thing it was missing was his turret. That's really it. Number 8, the Orion Wagon 1, also known as the Litcha Cat Wagon Orion Wagon 1. The Orion Wagon was a German prototype light tank from 1917, and I say prototype lightly as at least 11 to 15 of them were actually built. The Orion Wagon was armed with four 7.92mm machine guns. The Orion Wagon was basically the great-grandfather of all infantry support vehicles, of all infantry fighting vehicles. This was the first tracked armored vehicle to have the ability to carry additional troops within a special compartment. This vehicle had an armor thickness of 4 to 10 millimeters and had a speed of 6.2 miles per hour. The Orion Wagon 1 also spawned the Orion Wagon 2. The Orion Wagon 2 was pretty much an upgrade. The Orion Wagon 2 had two 20 millimeter Becker armor piercing auto cannons instead of the 7.92 millimeter machine guns of the previous Orion Wagon. There was also meant to be an Orion Wagon 3, but that project never got off the ground. In 1918, there were at least 14 Orion Wagon 1s completed before the armistice in November of the same year. The Orion Wagon 1 was one of those cool German tanks from the First World War 
that just never made it as far as one would imagine it would. Number seven, the Trafast Wagon. The Trafast Wagon, also known as the Panzer Cat Wagon Trafast or the Swell Rat Panzer Trafast, was an, it was an experimental prototype heavy wheel tank from 1916. This was another one of Germany's forgotten tanks of the First World War. This vehicle was armed with two 20mm Becker auto cannons. Keep in mind that your fast wagon is a giant steam wheel tank. It doesn't actually run on steam. This vehicle was meant to plow over enemy trenches. Just imagine if you were a French or a or British soldier or American soldier and you had to go up against a beast like the Trafast Wagon. This vehicle was armed with two 20mm Becker auto cannons. Its armor is unknown and its speed is unknown. The vehicle never made it past the experimental stage. It was pretty much abandoned in 1917 in favor of the A7V project. So yeah, another cool tank from Germany's military past that most tank enthusiasts know nothing about. Number six, the Russian Tsar tank. The Tsar tank, also known as the Lembedinko tank, was an experimental heavy wheel tank from 1914. This was Russia's first super heavy tank to be built. This tank was armed with two 76.2 millimeter M1902 Poplovsky field guns. Its armor was unknown, but was estimated to be between 6 and 10 millimeters. Its speed was 10.9 miles per hour. The Tsar tank was basically a giant armored tricycle meant to topple over enemy trenches and steamroll the enemy infantry while mowing them down with machine gun and, and light field artillery. The Tsar tank never made it past the experimental stage. The tank was tested in 1915 and found to have some flaws. The tank was eventually abandoned in 1916-1917 and was eventually scrapped in 1923 following the Russian Civil War. The Tsar tank is just too cool, you know. Even though the word cool is kind of lame nowadays. The Tsar tank is my spirit tank animal, if there was ever such a thing. Number 5. The Polish Krasowiec tank of 1918. The Krasowiec tank was an improvised wheel tank from 1918. This tank is very strange. It's kind of a mixture between a tank, a half track, and an armored car. This vehicle was armed with three 7.92 millimeter Maxim Spandu MG08 machine gun and was powered by a 32 horsepower water cold engine. This vehicle had an armor thickness of 10 millimeters. Um, this vehicle was built from an agricultural tractor called a Prague Model 1914. So yeah, this is literally an improvised wheel tank. So, uh, the Krasowiec tank was uh, used during the Polish-Soviet War and the Polish War of Independence between 1918 and 1921 to be exact. So yeah, this is one of those rare um, Polish tanks most people will never hear about. So yeah. So. Number 4, the Russian Vestik Hut tank of 1914. The Vestek Hood was an experimental light tank designed in 1914. Keep in mind, this was the first Russian tank to actually be built. There was one before this that was designed called the Medelev tank, but the Vestek Hood came first. The Vestek Hood was armed with a 7.62 mm PM 1910 machine gun. It had 8 millimeters of armor and it had a speed of 26.7 miles per hour. The Vestic hood had a single track system in which the track system was placed in the center of the tank rather than having two separate tracks as most tanks traditionally do. 
The Vestic Hut tank was one of the coolest Russian tanks designed during the First World War, but unfortunately this tank never made it past the experimental stage. Now, the main reason is because the Tsar Russian government stopped funding the original Vestic Hut project in 1915. When the project was at least 90% finished, the only thing that was left for the designer to do was to design the, was to actually build the turret for the 7.62 millimeter PM Maxim machine gun. That didn't happen. But in 1915, a Vestic Hood 2 was designed. This was basically a redesign with a dual turret fitted with two 7.62 millimeter machine guns rather than one. Just like the first Vestic Hood, funding eventually ran out and the Vestic Hood 2 project eventually came to an end in 1916-1917. And one year after that, the Russian Civil War broke out in 1918, thus putting an end to the Vestic Hood project as a whole. Number three, the 14 Abarat Gabat tank of 1915. The 14 tank was an experimental electric wheel tank from 1915. This vehicle was designed by the French military during one of their many experimental programs in which the French military were trying to design their own tank. The 14 Abarat Gabat, yes that's a long name, was armed with a 37 millimeter field gun. Its armor thickness was unknown but its speed was a slow 2.4 miles per hour. This wheel tank is one of those cool tanks from World War One that you never, you never hear about. Uh, I mean, it's odd looking. The main reason this vehicle was never adapted is simply because its electric motor still needed a core to be attached to the, the tank's body, meaning the vehicle would not be able to go very far. Some theorize that the 14 Abarat Gabat was probably an experimental drone tank. I did a video a while ago on World War I drones. This vehicle looks very similar, but it's not really a drone, it's just an electric powered armored fighting vehicle. This vehicle is really cool looking, but then again, you know, it wouldn't be hard to defeat this vehicle on the battlefields, even in the World War One. Number two, the Pioneer Skeleton Tank. The Pioneer Skeleton Tank was a prototype infantry support tank from 1918. This tank was designed by the United States. Its main armament was a 7.62 mm Colt Browning M1919 machine gun, and specifically speaking, the Model 1918 prototype of the M1919 machine gun. This tank had an armor thickness of only 12 millimeters. The speed was five miles per hour. Oh yes, this tank is one of these strangest tanks of World War I. I still can't figure out why the United States military thought an ectoskeleton tank design would be good. I mean, it's a cool looking tank and I would like to see this in any World War I video game in the future. Um, it's basically a, it's almost like the inner workings of a British Mark 1 through 5 tank, minus its armor. Um, this tank had a fighting compartment, which is the box shaped center. Um, its armor thickness uh, wasn't that good, I mean 12 millimeters. I'm pretty sure a German um, Mauser T Gewehr can still penetrate this with one shot. Uh, other than that, I mean, I always thought the skeleton tank was a good design, technically, in terms of just looking cool or looking, you know, original. But, you know, 
In all honesty, this thing could be easily uh, disabled by with a single uh, canister shot from a 77 millimeter field gun. The 77 millimeter was a standard German um, artillery during the First World War. So yeah, other than that, the skeleton tank is just one of those strange tanks that most people don't hear about when it comes to American tanks designed before World War II and during World War One. And finally, number one, the French Barot Project of 1915. The Barot Project, also known as the Diplodocus Militaris, was a series of experimental trench crossing land ships from 1915. Keep in mind, land ship was the term used for tanks in the years before the British Mark I, which is considered the first tank to be used on the battlefield. The Barot uh, machines had no armament as both machines were never finished completely. The tank's armor is basically none on the first model. The second model, its armor, its armor thickness was never measured. The Barot speed was only 1.8 miles per hour. Now that's pretty slow, even compared with the standard tanks of World War I, like the British Mark I, you know, for example. Um, these tanks were designed during the French um, experimental phase of 1915, in which the French were designing a variety of experimental tanks. These two prototypes, there's a second one, they're both, these are basically like giant moving tracks made of armor, basically. Um, these tanks just, I mean, just look at them. They're, they're so original. You, if you thought the British Mark I was strange, if you thought the A7V was strange, if you thought the skeleton tank was strange, the Borot machines, you know, demolishes those tanks in terms of strangeness. I mean, just imagine what would happen if these tanks had been adapted instead of the, uh, the St. Charmand or the FT-17. These tanks are just so unique looking. They're, they're the, the literal definition of this video. The strangest and the rarest tanks slash land ships of World War I. Um, these tanks were ne these land ships were never adapted. For one, they were too slow, meaning they they would be easy targets for you know German artillery or or Austrian artillery, depending on the front you're on. Um, the first model had no armor. The second model had armor, but the vehicle was still vulnerable. I mean, one hit to that that gap between the main track system and the hull would basically disable this vehicle. And when, and when I say hit, I mean with an artillery shell, most likely a canister shot from a 77 millimeter. So yeah, I, I guess that's it. I mean, these are the strangest um, tanks of World War I slash land ships of World War I. Um, I will do another video or more videos on World War I vehicles and weapons eventually. If you like this video, you can rate, comment, and or subscribe. And if you have any other ideas for future tank videos, please put them in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time signing off.